Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with the July curated bead box. This month it's called Coral Reef and from the picture it looks really cool. So I'm excited to jump in. Um, here is the item list and you can um, usually find the items on dollarbead.com using these codes. <clears throat> so a couple of these say new, so they might not be in there yet. Um, this box also comes with a finding starter kit, including crimp beads, elastic, beading wire, memory wire, head pins, jump rings, ear wires, and lobster clasps. Um, <clears throat> you can save 35% off of your first box by using coupon code TURQST35 at curatedbeadbox.com. So let me pop this open. That is an affiliate coupon code. I love it. Oh my gosh, I want, I'm already thinking of a necklace. Okay, so first I'm seeing um, a 10 millimeter soft turquoise jade style glass bead, eight inch string. I'm guessing it's this one. So like a light blue. Um, aqua waves jade style glass we, uh, beads. You know what, I don't, I couldn't tell you which one's which. So one's turquoise and one's jade, or I'm sorry, one's aqua waves. So one's green, one's blue. Um, next we have eight millimeter crisp blue glass pearl bead, 16 inch string, very pretty. Um, then we have burnt orange jade style glass bead, eight millimeter, six in 16 inch string. Those look like carnelian, but they're glass, which is awesome that you can find a less expensive bead that looks like carnelian. Um, then we have eight millimeter burnt orange blue duo style glass bead, 10 and a half inch string. Those are cool. Um, then we have apple green gold drizzled glass beads. Ooh, those are funky, eight millimeter. 10 and a half inch string. Then we have six millimeter bronze glass pearl beads. 16 inch string. I love these orange pearls. Orange pearls just do it for me every time. I love it. Um, six millimeter pale salmon jade style glass bead. These are very pale pink. 16 inch string. Aren't these colors wonderful together? They looked really good in the packaging. Um, six millimeter citrine jade style glass beads, so like a yellowy, yellowy color. They're a little bit more pale yellow than they're showing up on the screen, but they're very pretty. Um, olive gemstone style glass beads, eight millimeter, ten and a half inch string. So these are actually um, six millimeter and I don't know if these are a, a substitution um, or if they just did the size incorrectly because they were underneath the six millimeter but they are show they are six millimeters so they're not eight and then we have 12 millimeter carnelian gemstone beads 10 beads oh that's cool so we got some real carnelian this time those are really cool. I like them. They're like a pebble shape. I like a round, well, they're a rondelle. And then we have a 58 by 40 millimeter turtle silver metal pendant. Very cool. This is a weird whole place for a pendant. So I'm gonna have to work around that. But he is so cool. I wanna make a mold of him before I, <laughs> before I, um, use them though that's kind of cool and then we had some tassels polyester turquoise tassel five tassels cut to desired length so five of these these are nice pretty color of course my favorite color i like bigger tassels like this not the tiny tassels and then we have the silver findings kit this month all right well i like all of these colors together i think they look great um i'm gonna figure out what i want to do and i'll be back okay so i've made my mold i already did that other video of the the turtle i haven't posted it yet but i'm thinking i really want to patina this guy and maybe like in an ombre so um i want his shell to be turquoise of course and then i might patina his arms and legs and maybe his tail um there are a couple ways that I want to try this. So I have a piece of 
just old cardboard box right here. The colors I got out were turquoise, um, deep turquoise, verdigris, and marine for the shell. And then I'm thinking I'm going to mix jade and emerald for his skin or his um, legs uh, and head. But I want to also incorporate some gloss because I want to um, have the these colors run a little bit so and, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment I have to find my paintbrush here we go get a little dish out for some water Put the water right there and um, I am just going to I'm gonna start actually I'm gonna put my little guy on top of my paper towel I'm gonna start with the legs I'm gonna get my and so I'm going to put a little bit of, make sure you shake your patina paints. I'm going to put a little bit of the gloss medium. Actually a bit of the gloss medium. And a little bit of each one of these colors. Actually that's really close to the color I want. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the jade on there. go. I can always mix and match if it's not really what I'm looking for. So we're going to mix all of these together. I have more paper towel on standby because I might want to wipe off some of this depending on how it ends up. That's a good color to me. So I'm going to get that on my little turtle and see how if we were using regular just patina paints without that gloss medium or the extender you wouldn't be able to see much of that silver and I wanted it to look more enameled than just straight up painting the um, legs I love this I'm not going to wipe any of it off so I'm just going to continue with all the parts that I want to be green that is so fun You can do a realistic turtle, but I'm not doing a realistic turtle. What's what's the fun in that? I want a fantasy turtle, basically. And now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't even like compare these colors to the beads that came in the kit. <laughs> but I'll make it work because obviously there were some turquoises in um, the kit and the beads and the tassels, so I think we'll be okay. Now, if you don't have patina, there are a couple things you can do. Um, you could try painting, but you're going to need a sealer so the paint doesn't chip off, okay? Because um, that's definitely something that can happen, and you might want to paint um, the sealer on before you paint the color, and then after as well. Okay, I'm gonna wash out that brush and then um, kind of see. I want the, um, I might end up painting around the uh, shell after I paint the inside just to get it touched up a little bit. We'll see. I'm not sure what color I want to do either. I'm trying to decide if I want it to be solid or more like the rest of the turtle. I'm going to try seeing what the solid will look like. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it solid just for kicks and giggles. Turn them around because it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing with them facing the other way. 
if you need to you can do two coats stuff dries really fast by the way okay so I have four colors and I have one two three four five six of these so I'm gonna need two of one color um, Actually, I'm going to need two of two colors. Oh, we might need a little to unclog this a little bit. I don't know if a head pin will work or if I need to find a pin pin. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this turquoise is so close to the marine then I'm just gonna go with turquoise and do two of the turquoise or actually you know what we'll see I might do two of the verdigris and marina because um, since this looks kind of like we have two of the, almost the same color then we would have two verdigris and then two of the deep turquoise And I'm going to hit that one spot again with marine because it was not fully covered. There we go. So those are so close that I'm just going to do what I just explained is I'm going to go into verdigris next for these two. And then the last two will be the deep turquoise. And then if I don't like it, guess what? I can um, paint over it. <laughs> Always the option to paint over your mistakes. I'm like, this is already dry, so I can put my finger on it. Okay, so he's so cute. I'm not going to paint um, a color around the the shell. I like that that's silver. I think this is the cutest way I could have possibly painted this guy. I mean, in uh, another ombre color scheme that would look great would be maybe pink to purple or yellow to red or just orange to red. Um, so cool. Uh, so I'm going to seal this though. Not that the patina needs to be sealed, but I did notice some tarnish um, already starting on the back of the turtle. So I'm just going to seal the whole thing to try and prevent some tarnish in the circle around it. Now, if I notice in the future that it's tarnishing, I will either clean it or um, I will just uh, paint it. All right, so I'm just going to put more of this gloss extender because it, it's an, either an extender or a sealer for patina and metal. So it's wonderful. It'll dry in five to ten minutes. So I will set this aside while we're waiting and start working or start trying to design the necklace around the, the turtle. So just take a paintbrush. This is already dry from everything I've done to it. And I'm just going to apply an even coat over the whole thing. <gasps> oh! It wasn't as dry as I thought it was, or the extender kind of might have made it a little wet. Oh, darn. It's okay. I'm going to try and get that peel out of where it laid, and it did. So I'm just going to wait a little bit more for that portion to dry. I'm going to wash out my brush so I don't get teal anywhere else either. I'm going to uh, go get my heat gun, actually. Hit it with the heat gun. Um, you want to keep it a few inches away from the piece and then I'm going to uh, paint on the extender and then go from there. To protect my um, bead mat and the work surface underneath my bead mat, I'm just going to put a little tile that I have for um, polymer clay underneath there because I don't want it to burn anything. Even though I'm not going to be holding it there for very long or very close. Just 
safety first, right? Okay, just not even a full minute. It's kind of warm. You don't want to really touch it. I'm going to set it aside, let that cool down, and then paint it. And I'm going to try and come up in the meantime with what I'd like to do for the necklace. Now, if you remember that turtle has a very interesting connection point on the neck. So we're going to have to figure that out. But look at all these fun beads we have. So I'm just going to set him right there so I can see. Oh, obviously we want to use these because they match very, very well. I kind of want to use these. Wow, that green looks good too. I love those. And maybe a pop of orange. Maybe. Not 100% sure about that. I like these. These are the carnelian. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like these, maybe these four together. I like all of them, really. And then if I can find some similar, maybe silver beads from my stash, I can hit them with some patina too. Okay, so I've gotten out a few beads from my stash. I have on these little cute fishy beads, um, some larger fishy beads. I think I'm going to make a matching bracelet and maybe paint the fish to be similar to my turtle. Um, and I got some crystals that coordinate from my stash. I always say this um, box, Carry to Be Box, is a great stash builder for newbies and for people who just are trying to obtain more beads, um, you know, affordably. Um, and I always encourage people to pull beads in from their own stash. So um, I also have this waxed linen cord, at least that's what they called it. Um, it really doesn't feel like wax linen to me, but I got it from Amazon and it was pretty cheap. Um, this is, I think, one millimeter and it's such a beautiful teal. It matches the deep turquoise on the bottom of the little turtle here. And um, I'm, I don't know that I want this to be a terribly long necklace, but if I'm going to knot it, uh, which I might, I'm not sure, we want it to be double the length, we, uh, the, the length of the cord to be about double what, um, I'd want the necklace to end up being, and I want the necklace to end up being maybe 26 inches long, 28, I don't know. So not too, too long, but not like super short either. So um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna just pull out four feet. We're gonna um, string on the turtle first. So I'm going to line those up. them through there bring the ends through the loop pull it down to the turtle and we want to kind of look come around him like he's wearing his own little necklace to the back so that's what that's gonna look like not intrusive at all and if you want you can kind of decorate that if you have very large whole sea beads um, with some sea beads you could just come up and um, start putting your beads on, but I'm going to tie another knot here just for my own sanity. <laughs> Pull that down and I'm going to walk it down to my turtle. There we go. All right, so we have a little knot there. And then when we pull it up here, 
we're just going to pull one strand in one direction, the other in the other, and start piling on our beads. So um, I kind of want something smaller right here and then leading up into our bigger beads. And I don't know if I got out a smaller bead that would work here. So um, I got out these little, little crystals will work. Hopefully, you know what? I don't know if the hole will be big enough. My friend um, Anne-Marie sent these to me. So let's see. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. I'll just find a metal bead or something that'll go right here. I'm gonna cut this on a diagonal. Yeah, it's wonderful. Move that out of the way. Push this down to our little turtle. And that's going to be really cute coming right up next to the turtle. So, um, I think I'm going to put a knot right there before the bead. And I have my knotting pliers. You can use tweezers, you can just use your fingers, whatever works for you. But it's easier for me when I use my knotting pliers. Pull that down to where I'd like the knot to be. And then we push down our crystal. And I don't know that I'm going to knot between every single bead. Um, I have some silver spacers here. And I really like this green that was on this uh, in the box. And maybe just do like a little vignette. So we do our green, our crystal, our silver, our green, then back to our crystal, our silver, and then crystal, and then maybe that that's when I'll do the knot. So let's see how that looks. Super cute, super cute. So I'm gonna do a knot right there. And then maybe I'll put on a fishy. Come in between the, or through the knot, or through the, the loop, grab onto right where I want the knot to be, pull that tight, and then push it down. There we go. So we have a little bead section. And then I'm going to put on a fish and I want the fish to be swimming towards my little, oh, do I want to be swimming away from my turtle? Do I want them all to be swimming in the same direction or do I want them to be swimming towards the turtle? Let's see. That's a good question. I think we'll want them to be swimming away from the turtle so that they're all going in the same direction. But let's test it just to make sure. <laughs> that way we don't have to unknot things if we don't like how it looks. Yeah, I liked it the other way. And I think um, since I'm leaving these fish silver, I will hit them with that um, gloss glaze so I don't, so they don't tarnish as much over time. Yeah, I like that. So next I'm going to do another um, like little knot and then a bead vignette past it. So this, this next one I'm going to use the same crystals and the same silver beads, but I'm going to go ahead and use the blue. And if you need to keep trimming, that's fine. This is this stuff tends to fray a little bit, and um, you can also use super glue or wax to try and keep the ends a little 
pointier. I'm going to actually try and grab some super glue and do that in just a moment. Because if I keep trimming, we're going to end up with a shorter piece. So that's soaked in a little bit and just gonna let that dry for just a moment. Okay, and then we'll keep going. Okay, and now I'm going to, to kind of test, do I want, I think instead of another fish here, I might want um, a crystal, then an orange and then a crystal, but let's check it out. I can always change our minds. The good thing about making your own jewelry, you can change it up whenever you want to. I'm not loving it. I do like the orange, but I don't I don't like this little vignette. This is wax. Just trying to make it a little bit stronger without putting super glue down the whole piece because that super glue is tending to bloat um, the cord and I'm having to cut it after a couple passes through a bead. All right, so. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stay with the blue, green, blue, green, and then I'll put some of this um, faux carnelian on my bracelet. I'm just gonna go ahead and string this because it's, it's like watching paint dry me string and beads. <laughs> All right, so we have both sides finished. It's so cute. And um, I'm letting a little fishy bead dry. I um, washed it with, I mixed all four colors together and it came up with this wonderful aqua and so I just sealed it and I'm just waiting for it to dry um, we're gonna use that on a, a bracelet and uh, I decided I am going to finish off the back since there isn't really a whole lot of cord left with some collots or clamshells whatever you want to call it so I put I strung one on I did a final knot here strung one on did another knot and put a dot of super new glue on it so I'm just going to trim that on this side And it worked a lot better when I just waxed the entire cord instead of using a super glue um, on, on this specific cord for these specific beads. And then I'm just gonna close it up and squish it a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So I have my collot. This one I tried to open um, pretty wide because once they're closed, that little hole can get a little bit smaller. However, you wanna be very careful because I have snapped them in half trying to do that once or twice. <laughs> by once or twice I mean like 15 times <laughs> over the course of the time I've been using these in my life so um, not the not the strongest metal right there but they're a great alternative to tying knots around clasps so again I'm going to tie a knot here and then I'll stick my knot, knotting pliers down through that loop. Your time, and if you don't have time to finish it, walk away, come back when you do have time. All right, so we have that. I have my super new glue. Do a little dot. Don't need a lot of that because it's really just going to be covered up. I just want a little bit to encourage that to never come apart. And then we'll cut and squish. Okay. We have some lobsters in our kit. And that'll allow it, me to make it adjustable later on if I want to add some chain to the back. Um, 
normally I would use a toggle, but I think I think this is a good idea for for this necklace. My since I'm right-handed, my clasp on the right-hand side of the necklace. Oops, that fell off because it's easier for me to clasp it that way. All right, so our necklace is complete, but I still have um, that fishy that I painted and I really just want um, some matching bracelets. Um, so let's see what we can make. Here is the adorable, sweet little baby necklace. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm definitely gonna be wearing it this summer. Isn't that so much fun? Isn't it just great that you can totally customize um, mass-produced components to make them look more artisan? Like, that's cute, and not anybody else, you're not really gonna see this on anybody else. Um, and you can absolutely customize it even more by painting your other beads. So, there's that. Um, Here's my little fishy. I hope he's dry enough. If not, I can reseal him later, but I just love that color. Uh, I did want to use these red beads and maybe some of these crystals. I also want to make a knotted bracelet that's kind of similar to the necklace. Um, where, let's see, I had a couple fish I had a couple fish left. And this guy doesn't work with the cord. I have this cute little seahorse button um, that Am Emma sent me, so I'm going to use that on a bracelet. And. Um, I think we're gonna make this one a stretch bracelet. So this will be the focal on this bracelet. I think we're gonna do some combo of these over here and then, I don't know what we're gonna do with that guy yet, but let's start with the seahorse one. I'm not going to patina it. I think it's a tiara cast button, but I can't be positive. And I'm gonna cut some of my cord. And we've seen me make this rendition of this bracelet a few times, but it's one of my go-tos because it's easy and it's always customizable. So it's gonna look it's gonna look completely different every single time you make it if you don't use the same beads, rather than like a strung bracelet can look very similar to another strung bracelet. So I'm using a different type of cord, whereas I've used leather before, and this one will just look different. All right, so I'll bring the button down to the middle right here. And I'm going to put on a knot or tie a knot there. Okay, and we'll move that knot down to our button. And I could possibly do a four strand bracelet here, but two is going to be perfect. And actually, I don't even know if I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do one strand or two. We'll see. Oops. All right, so we have our little seahorse button. I don't know if I wanna do one. I think I'm gonna do a one strand and we're just gonna knot around. A, so here, I'll show you. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to just explain it when I can show you. <laughs> so I'm going to put some wax on my cord. I am going to load on a crystal. Load on a crystal. Move it down to our button. And I am going to knot around that button. Or I'm sorry, knot around that bead. So this is a little different than some of the ones that I've shown. It's gonna take a little bit more time and a little bit more product, like cord, but um, 
just gives you a different look using the same same original start point of the bracelet. It's always good to to have different designs in your arsenal that you can adapt. All right, so start there. I'm gonna put a little fishy on. I actually realized that I have a another baggie of these fishes. These fish, these fish. All right. And I'm gonna do him towards my seahorse's time because the seahorse is facing away from the bracelet. And then we'll just do another knot. So that that knot is trapping the bead, but also showing around the other side. So it kind of looks like um, fisherman's netting. Not that I really want it to look like a fish net, but you see what I mean? You see the fish there and then see the cord. Next, I'm gonna go with a green bead making sure that I'm putting it on the same cord. I guess it doesn't really matter which cord you use um, to put it on, uh, but that one has wax on it, so it's easier for me to use that one. And then I'm gonna go I'm trying to decide if I just want fish and crystals on here. No, we're gonna go with these because I want it to match the necklace. And then a fish and then a blue bead and then I'm gonna keep going. We're at the end and all I'm gonna to do to finish this off is create another um, knot that will allow our seahorse to slip through as the closure. So I just wanna make sure that it's wide enough that my seahorse can get through. I really cut it close, <laughs> I measured my um, cord pretty well for this one that's for sure just make sure that that'll go through and then I'll tighten it yep that'll work okay and then I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna put try and put some beads on, but it's gonna be pretty hard to to um, not that one. We'll see. Let's put one on each end. Gives a little more oomph to the end of your bracelet. Okay. And if you want, you can fray the end. I'm just gonna cut it. go and then I'm gonna do one more there we go cute little sea life bracelet um, I did notice that my second set of fishes were a little smaller I didn't realize that so I'm gonna go ahead and um, seal those after the video because we've already seen how to do that so there's that one um, I think I just want a really quick bracelet with the um, orange beads and my fish and I'll just grab my little spacers and then some there was some stretch cord in the kit string and there we go and then I'm just gonna put these on and alternate okay so I'm gonna trim here and stretch don't be shy if your bracelet pops, we want it to pop here and not after you've already strung it or after you've already knotted it. Um, they don't usually pop unless there's an issue with the cord. And I'm just going to do three knots. So one, two, and three. 
and my GS Hypo cement is a hot mess. So the um, the um, little pin came out of the cap. So I have to like manually put it in and take it out. And this little thing came out too. So I really messed this one up. <laughs> but these are a little expensive for glue. So I, I'm going to nurse it. So I just put my pin back in. Put my cap back on. And pull. And then here is my bracelet. Pull that into the bead. And here are my two beachy bracelets. Super cute. Um, I'm still kind of envisioning one where I just use these two and a button on cord. So that might happen as well at some point. I'm going to go ahead and seal all of these pieces and then um, I'll have a really cute beachy set for the rest of the summer. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite part was. Stay tuned for Goldie. And if you want to subscribe to the curated bead box, you can get um, 35% off of your first box by using coupon code TURQST35 at curatedbeadbox.com. Um, links in the description. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. And please like, subscribe, and share. Have a good day. Bye-bye.